couple months ago, I made a video that told the story of Roger Rabbit in the Disney theme parks. That was the first episode in a series I called Characters in the Parks. And since then, I have not made another video in that series. That is until today. Because this episode is all about the Muppets. Who doesn't love the Muppets? I love the Muppets, of course. Their charm is something we've never seen before and likely will never see again. The Muppets were created by a man named Jim Henson, whose birthday was recently, about two weeks ago, I believe. The earliest sign of a Muppet character was Kermit the Frog on a show that Jim worked on called Sam and Friends. Sam and Friends had some success. It had enough to catch the attention of people at Sesame Street who hired Jim. Jim Henson was a huge contributor to Sesame Street, creating a lot of its iconic characters. He eventually did leave the show, and he went on to create The Muppet Show. This was the first show to feature all the Muppets. Fozzie, Kermit, Miss Piggy, Gonzo, Animal. They're all here. The Muppets got so popular that it spawned a movie called The Muppet Movie, starring, of course, The Muppets. After this, The Muppets craze really began. Ten movies, a whole lot of merchandise, a Muppet Baby spin-off show on Disney Channel, even puppets that you could buy followed after The Muppet Movie's, movie's success. In the last few years of Jim Henson's life, he was in talks with Disney on selling the company to them. Disney had already plans to make an entire Muppets land, and this is where Disney enters the story. The land would have a 3D movie that would show in the Muppets Theater. A ride that would be a spoof on the great movie ride titled The Great Muppets Movie Ride. Not so subtle there, is it? It would be almost like The Great Movie Ride, but movies like Frankenstein would be acted out by the Muppets. Another plan for this land would be a restaurant run by Gonzo and Rizzo the Rat. You're probably asking, isn't that just pizza Rizzo? And you're kind of correct. But it wasn't supposed to be pizza Rizzo back then. The restaurant was supposed to be called The Great Gonzo's Pizza pandemonium parlor and served pizza. The plan was to have no waiters and your food be delivered to you by animatronic rat on a conveyor belt on wood above you. This was supposed to be in the building where Mama Melrose is today and if you look up on the ceiling you can actually still see the wood that was supposed to be in the pizza parlor and of course that never came to be, and I'll explain in a little bit why it didn't come to be, but, uh, I don't know, getting your food served to you by a rat, even if it's an animatronic, I don't see the appeal in that. Like I said before, this land never came to fruition, and why isn't that land here today? Well, in 1990, Jim Henson died due to pneumonia. N pneumonia, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. It's a word that I've never seen before and I literally can't pronounce it. I've tried before and I, it was horribly butchered. <laughs> Jim's family were so quick to protect his work and all plans for the Muppet Land were cancelled. Muppet Vision 3D was the only planned attraction that came to fruition and that's all because of Mr. Frank Oz. Allegedly, Frank Oz took Jim's family to see Muppet Vision 3D before opening and successfully convinced them to let Disney open the show, but only in Walt Disney World. And this was later changed because of uh, California Adventure. They did have Muppet Vision 3D in there for a little bit. But at the time, they were very hesitant to let Disney use this for some reason. The acquisition of the Muppets themselves, the deal fell apart after Jim died, and it's, it's sad because Muppet Vision 3D did open in 1991, and it's the last thing Jim Henson ever worked on, but 
if you ever if you've never seen Muppet Vision 3D, it is a 4D show with the Muppets trying to give a tour of the Muppet Labs. It's a very good show. I see it every time, and I highly recommend seeing it every single time. I like Muppet Vision so much that I actually have a pin of it. And it is right here. It's one of the uh, piece of Disney history pins. And it has a little piece of the old Muppet Vision uh, hot air balloon. And it used to sit on top of the building before Galaxy's Edge. Because they, they took it down because of the view line. It was too tall. They didn't want it to take away from the immersive Galaxy's Edge. And I, I respect that decision. You know, you want to keep guests immersed in your land. I get it. But back on topic. In 1991, Here Comes the Muppets also opened up in the theater now occupied by Voyage of the Little Mermaid. And this was a stage show that had Kermit trying to get the gang together for a show. That's literally the plot. There's, it's so simple. It's just Kermit trying to get the gang together. <laughs> but the but it is funny because at the end the somehow they get the monorail to crash through the building in Hollywood Studios. If you know the monorail route, it doesn't go to Hollywood Studios. I don't know how they did that. <laughs> Also, a street show called Muppets on Location Days of Swine and Roses was put out there. And the plot, again, was very simple. It just had the Muppets filming the movie. Not, yeah, not, not the best use of the Muppets IP there. And speaking of not great usage, the Muppets, in my opinion, are not very... are very underutilized by Disney, but that's a whole nother point. Let's talk about Mother Vision 3D some more. It did have success, but nothing else looking very good for the Muppets. The company that owned them, EMTV and Merchising, Merchandising AG, sold the Muppets back to the Henson family for $78 million, and they only owned them for a year until finally selling the Muppets to Disney in 2004. And they didn't really do anything with them, except the few walk-around characters that were in the parks for a little bit. In 2009, the Muppets got onto YouTube, making some videos here and there, like the Beaker Ode to Joy video, the Statler and Waldorf internet series, <laughs> I love these videos, by the way. I I I I'll, I'll, I revisit them every once in a while. I'm making this video. I I did it. They're they're still good. They were good videos, but I don't really know why they were made. Cause they weren't. Uh, they didn't make a movie yet until 2011, but they were just putting up these YouTube videos for some reason. But actually, one had actual success. The Muppets covered Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, and it gained, to this day, has 97 million views on YouTube. That, that's a lot. So two years later, in 2011, the Muppets had a new movie come out, plainly titled The Muppets. And this was a huge movie, it's all come back for the Muppets, critics, fans, and the box office all showed love for this movie. It even had a sequel in 2014. A spin-off show, TV show, more funny YouTube videos, and yes, a growth of popularity in the parks. For the first time since the 90s, a Muppet had a meet and greet in Hollywood Studios. Let's give it up. Get it off for Constantine. Back in the 90s, the Muppets used to have meet and greets all the time. They had walk around characters. But they don't come out anymore. And it's not because they look freaky. I don't know. They just don't come out anymore. I, I, I really don't have any answer for you. But luckily, in 2014, 
at Villains Unleashed, the villain from Muppets Most Wanted made an appearance as a puppet, not as walk around. He was a literal puppet behind bars, and guests could walk up to him and say something. Seen videos of it. It was cool. Wish they. I wish they had Muppet meet and greets now. You can see. You can't meet them. But you can see Beaker and Dr. Bunsen Honeydew in Epcot during the Muppets Mobile Lab show, and Sam Eagle, Fozzie, Gonzo, Miss Piggy, and Kermit perform as historical figures in the Muppets Presents Great Moments in American History, and I always forget the name of that show because it's so, so long. It's a great show. I recommend seeing it. It's in Liberty Square. Uh, it's about 10 minutes. If that, it's not very long. They perform as historical figures, American historical figures. It's a good show. But that is the Muppets history inside and outside of the parks. You can still see Muppet Vision 3D to this day in the park. It's only, the show times were downsized a little bit. They used to run one after another. But now they show every 30 minutes. So if you get there right after a show is right after a show is started, bad luck because you have to wait another 30 minutes. And that's why it has such long wait times around this time. I've noticed that that ever since they extended it like that, it's had a lot of wait time, but that is the reason. So the Muppets still have a presence in the Disney theme parks, and I love it. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, leave a like down below and consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me. And comment your favorite Muppets in the comments below. I would like to hear from you guys. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Have a magical day.